We do not know when or who the Antichrist will be, but the Bible provides prophecies and revelations that help us identify its fulfillment. They are doing exactly what the end-time prophecy in Revelation 6 tells us. Is the unrest we see in the world today just a series of coincidences, or does it indicate something much deeper? The Bible is not just any history book. It is unique. It begins with the creation of the earth and concludes with the end of the world. No other book spans such a vast timeline because no one was there at the beginning to witness and record it. Therefore, no one else can write about the beginning of our world with authority. We are the only people who know how it will all end. This knowledge is special. The Lord shared the future not to satisfy our curiosity, but to prepare us so that it does not catch us by surprise nor misinterpret what will come. We should be grateful that Jesus shared this so clearly. People often ask if we are living in the end times, but the Bible mentions the last days, and we have been in these last days for 2,000 years. The last days began at Pentecost with the fulfillment of the first prophecy about these times. Each generation of Christians must live as if the Lord could return at any moment. The Bible is full of prophecies with 735 predictions about the future scattered throughout its pages, meaning that one in every four chapters contains a prophecy. From beginning to end, the Bible is essentially a book of prophecies although some books emphasize predictions more than others. Of these 735 prophecies, 596 have already occurred exactly as predicted. Thus, 81 of the Bible's prophecies have been fulfilled, with many of them predicted centuries in advance. It is not difficult to believe that the remaining 19 will also be fulfilled. This is an impressive track record Today, we face many challenges, wars, natural disasters, and significant political changes. The book of Revelation offers a vision of what the end of the world might be like. Jesus instructed us to watch and pray. What should we watch for? It is not about staring at the sky waiting for his return. That is not what he meant. He asked us to be aware of world events and recognize the signs he gave us to help us prepare. These signs are warning signs. Let's go back to chapter 24 of Matthew, where the disciples ask Jesus, What will be the signs of your coming? What should we do if we do not know when it will happen? Jesus gave a clear and direct answer. We can be grateful that he answered so clearly. In the book of Revelation, he gives a more detailed and comprehensive answer. But here, he outlines the signs that will precede his coming. The disciples approached Jesus privately while he was sitting on the Mount of Olives. Matthew 24, 3, 30 says, As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, claiming, I am the Messiah, and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, Many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other, and many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. And then the end will come. So when you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let no one on the housetop go down to take anything out of the house. Let no one in the field go back to get their cloak. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that your flight will not take place in winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now.
and never to be equaled again. If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. At that time, if anyone says to you, Look, here is the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you ahead of time. So if anyone tells you, there he is, out in the wilderness, do not go out, or here he is, in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever there is a carcass, there the vultures will gather. Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then all the peoples of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. In this passage, he pointed out four clear signs of his coming. One of these signs is already visible, while the other three are not yet evident. That is why I say we are at the beginning of the end times. So, what are these four signs he mentioned? The first sign involves disasters occurring worldwide, such as wars, famines, and earthquakes. These events are certainly happening and have been for over 2,000 years, and they seem to be getting worse. To help you understand these signs more quickly and easily, we are facing difficult times when prophecies are being fulfilled, but many do not realize what is happening around the world. For this reason, I decided to offer a gift to all channel subscribers, a digital ebook, The Secret Behind the Holy Bible, so you can download it immediately. The link is in the first pinned comment. In this book, I reveal all the secrets of biblical prophecies that will shock you. Do not waste time. Click on the first pinned comment because we only have a few copies available and it will soon be taken down. Revelation 6.16 speaks of Satan on earth. This part of the book is the heart of it all and can be difficult to understand and follow. Unfortunately, we have reached the hard part. Things will get much worse before they get better. However, it is comforting to know that the situations described in these chapters are as bad as they can get, but that is still quite troubling. The seven seals are God's judgments for the end of the world. Revelation 6, 1, 17 explains these seals. The story begins in Revelation 5, with the search for someone in heaven and on earth who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll. The importance of the scroll is revealed as the events unfold. It contains the plan that will end the current era of earthly history. John writes, Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. This scroll includes God's judgment. No one was found worthy to break the seals and open the scroll, which saddens John. If the scroll could not be opened, evil would not be judged and would continue to afflict the earth. While John weeps for the unopened scroll and its intact seven seals, he receives excellent news. The Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of Judah, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. This is a representation of Jesus Christ, the sacrificed lamb, who is also the lion of judgment. When Jesus takes the scroll to open the seals and execute judgment on the unbelieving world, the beings in heaven glorify him with a new song. Revelation 5.9 says, And they sang a new song, saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve. Our God, and they will reign on the earth. John 5, 22 says, Moreover, the Father judges no one, but has entrusted all judgment to the Son. Putting it entirely in his hands, the Lamb begins to open the seals amid the worship due to him. 
and the scroll can be unrolled a little more with each open seal, exposing the judgments God has prepared for the time of tribulation. Little by little, the first four of the seven seals are opened, releasing what is known as the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, because the judgments appear metaphorically as a horse and its rider, leaving destruction in their wake. The Seven Seals of Revelation The First Seal I watched as the Lamb opened the first of the seven seals. Then I heard one of the four living creatures say in a voice like thunder, Come! I looked, and there before me was a white horse. Its rider held a bow, and he was given a crown, and he rode out as a conqueror bent on conquest. This rider on the white horse is generally seen as a symbol of conquest or expansion of religious teachings. The bow and the crown show that he has great power and control. White is often associated with purity and victory. In biblical times, a white horse was a symbol of triumph and defeat. The white horse in the first seal can be seen as a powerful symbol of something that arrives with significant impact. The bow represents the ability to conquer from a distance, suggesting a form of power that does not necessarily involve direct combat. The crown implies authority and royalty, indicating that the rider has a form of ruling power. Together, the symbols depict a figure of great influence and dominion. Some interpretations see the rider as a symbol of conquest, representing the expansion of power or influence by military or other means. Another perspective sees the rider as a metaphor for the spread of the gospel. In this view, the white horse symbolizes the purity of the message, and the bow represents the far-reaching impact of God's word. There are debates among scholars about whether this rider represents Christ, as Christ is described as riding a white horse later in Revelation 19, 11, or if he represents the Antichrist, symbolizing deception and false peace. The opening of the first seal is seen as the beginning of the end-time events, marking the start of what is often called the Tribulation Period. This sets the stage for the unfolding of other events, each represented by the subsequent seals. Before continuing the video, an important message, do not forget to get your copy of our book. It is in the first pinned comment of this video. The second seal, described in Revelation 6.3, 4, introduces a red horse. When the Lamb opened the second seal, another horse came out, a fiery red one. Its rider was given power to take peace from the earth and to make people kill each other. To him was given a large sword representing war and bloodshed. It is a period where peace is removed, leading to conflicts and destruction. The red horse and its rider represent a time of great wars and struggles among people. Red is associated with danger and violence, which fits the theme of the seal. The rider has a large sword, indicating that the upcoming battles will be on a large scale and serious. The image painted is not about small fights or disputes in a single place, but about large wars that will affect many people in different countries. The opening of the second seal and the arrival of the red horse symbolize a period where peace is broken and chaos reigns through war. It is a warning of a time when harmony and order are disrupted, leading to suffering and destruction on a global scale. The third seal, the black horse, in Revelation 6, reveals a black horse. I looked, and there before me was a black horse. Its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. Then I heard what sounded like a voice saying, A kilogram of wheat for a day's wages, and three kilograms of barley for a day's wages, and do not damage the oil and the wine. This vision is generally understood as a symbol of a time of famine and economic hardship. The black horse may represent sorrow or difficult times. The rider holding a pair of scales is a symbol of measuring and rationing food, something people might do when there is not enough food for everyone. Basic foods will become very expensive, requiring a whole day's wages to buy just a little wheat or barley. This indicates a time when food is scarce and people have to work hard to get enough to eat. However, the command not to damage the oil and the wine 
suggests that while basic foods are scarce, some luxury items might still be available. This could mean that economic hardships will not affect everyone equally. Some people will still have access to more expensive goods. Overall, the third seal points to a time when getting enough food is difficult for many people, and the gap between rich and poor becomes more noticeable. The fourth seal. The fourth seal in the book of Revelation deals with a pale horse, and its rider's name is Death. When the Lamb opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come. I looked, and there before me was a pale horse. Its rider was named Death, and Hades was following close behind him. They were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword, famine, and plague, and by the wild beasts of the earth, Revelation 6, 7-8. This symbolizes a lot of death and disease, causing the death of many people. In simple terms, this part of Revelation speaks of a time when many people on earth will die. The pale horse is a symbol of death. The fact that the horse is pale, a color often associated with sickness and weakness, highlights the grim nature of the seal. The rider named Death represents the end of life, and following him is Hades, which in this context is like the grave or the place where the dead go. This seal suggests that a significant portion of the world will experience great suffering and loss of life. The ways people will die are listed as war, sword, famine, disease, plague, and attacks from wild animals, beasts of the earth. This image is meant to portray a very difficult and tragic time on earth. The fifth seal. Revelation 6, 9, 11 opens the fifth seal, revealing the souls of the martyrs. I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony they had maintained. This seal shows how people who believe in their faith in God may suffer or even die for it. It tells them to remain patient and continue to believe even when things get really tough. Although the fifth seal of Revelation found in the New Testament is a particularly poignant and solemn part of the vision given to John, this seal represents a scene quite different from the first four seals. In it, John sees the souls of people who were killed because they believed in the word of God and stood firm in their faith, even in the face of danger. These souls cry out to God, asking how long it will be until he judges the people of the earth for the wrongs they have committed and for their deaths. In response, each of them is given a white robe, which symbolizes purity and righteousness. It is like a reward for their faith and suffering. Then they are told to wait a little longer until the number of their fellow servants, brothers, and sisters, who must be killed as they were, is completed. The Sixth Seal Cosmic Disturbances The Sixth Seal in Revelation 6, 12, 17 brings chaos to the heavens. There was a great earthquake. The sun turned black like sackcloth made of goat hair, and the whole moon turned blood red. This seal suggests significant cosmic and natural disturbances, symbolizing divine judgment and the shaking of earthly powers. The sixth seal speaks of great changes and disasters in disasters, in nature and the universe, showing God's power and how he can change things on earth. The earthquake shows a moment of much chaos and major changes on earth. First, the sun turned black like sackcloth made of goat hair, and the whole moon turned blood red. Revelation 6, 12. This describes strange and frightening changes in the sky. The sun darkens, and the moon appears red, which could symbolize significant disturbances in the natural world. The stars in the sky fell to earth. Revelation 6.13, suggesting a scene where it looks like the stars are falling from the sky, increasing the chaos and fear. Do not forget to download our book, The Secret Behind the Biblical Prophecies. Over 500,000 copies have been sold, and we are in the last units, so do not waste time and take advantage. I guarantee that you will gain a lot of knowledge after reading this sensational book.
made with much care and love for all the subscribers of our channel, entirely based on the Holy Bible. The link is in the first pinned comment. May the word shared here resonate deeply in your heart, bringing clarity and inspiration to your life. As you reflect on these messages, may you be encouraged to live with love, kindness, and discernment, always seeking truth and integrity in your daily walk. Thank you again for your attention and willingness to receive this message. May God continue to bless you richly in all areas of your life, granting you wisdom, peace, and abundant joy. May divine grace guide your steps and strengthen your spirit at all times.